we use a third party. You know, we use a we use a company called Symbio to help us with that third party. Are there a third party that helps us with PO processing? And some more details about that. Um, you know, for those suppliers that send us electronic invoicing through Coupa or use Coupa to flip invoices, um, flip POs into invoices, you don't have to you don't have to enter those invoices manually. We, re we really want to push suppliers to use the portal, and then some functions that will be handled centrally. First, the release of supplier payments will be done centrally, but the properties will have the ability to receive checks at the property, and Matthew will go through how to do that in the demonstration. Um, new suppliers, requests for changes in suppliers um, get handled centrally. The posting process for Cooper to Oracle, um, as well as the closing for AP. Um, we, we also will have, a, will have a process to pull invoice, approved invoices out of Stratton Warrant, feed them into Oracle. We, we have a central help desk that's available to support um, the properties as far as supplier inquiries and, and any reconciliation of statements, particularly those that may cross over multiple properties, and as well as providing support for responding to buyer issues related to pending receipts and also invoices that are rejected. You know, before Matthew gets into the demo, just again, some highlights for processing invoices in Coupa. Everything at the property gets entered directly into Coupa. There's really there's no direct entry into Oracle. Uh, this includes both POs and non-PO transactions. You know the non-PO in Coupa will have a man will have an approval hierarchy that will be set up so that once you submit once you submit the non-PO invoice into Coupa, it'll route internally automatically, and when the final person approves it approves it, it'll it'll then feed into Oracle. You know, I, I mentioned that any any type of invoice you process that you need that check on property, we'll show you how you can indicate that in Coupa. And again, that's an automatic process in Oracle. You know, wires can be submitted into Coupa, wire requests, or wires that you've done outside of AP that you want to apply the wires in AP. That's that's that package is submitted in Coupa, and we'll we'll do an application process in Oracle. You know, your buyers have learned that tax and freight are not included on the Coupa PO, but it will be it will be detailed in the invoice process, and Matthew will go through that. And again, no. Yeah, I apologize. Um, and again, just to reiterate, no direct entry at the property in Oracle. Any any questions on those first two slides? No, it was about the money. Okay. I am ready to turn this over to Matthew and he'll go through the Cooper invoicing process. And again, please interrupt us at any time if you, if something we say if it generates any type of question, okay? Stop sharing that I will share my screen. Got it. Yep. Okay. Can everyone can everyone see Matthew's screen? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. So this is Coupa. This is Coupa. Um, this is actually the test side. The, the, the two main differences between test and production is you won't have a test at the top, and this, instead of being gray, it would actually be blue. Those are the two main differences. Um, so I'm going to show you how to process a uh, non-PO invoice, and I'll also go through PO invoices and credit memos as well. So we'll start off with the non-PO invoice. So you would go to invoices, which is up at the screen, you just click on it, and I'll come up to all the invoices. Um, you'll have this ability of your property's invoices that are already in Coupa. 
Um, then you would hit create. And this actually creates the invoice. This starts creating the invoices. Um, so then you would hit your supplier. You would type in your supplier, just start typing them in. And you would pick the supplier. Then you would actually come over here and pick the remit. It's important to know what your remit is on the invoice. Um, this is because we are migrating all of the suppliers that have the same TIN numbers into one supplier number. So the supplier numbers are changing. So it won't be the same as you have currently. Um, so you would locate the one that has the remit you use and you just hit choose next to that. Hey, what, one comment that I, that the properties will have to get used to. I, I know, you know, today when you when you're in AP, you, you only see your suppliers, but in Coupa, you'll you'll to the extent that multiple properties use the same supplier, you, you're going to see a lot of remits. So you just have to get used to being able to go right to your remit because um, it'll be more data than you're used to seeing. Correct. So you hit choose, um, then you would take the the chart of accounts. There's two of them. You actually want to pick the PNG chart of accounts because that's the one that's supposed to be go live into Oracle, that's where all the GL information will be located. Then you want to type in your invoice number. When you type in your invoice number, any leading zeros take place, you put in your invoice number. If they have any um, characters, as in dashes and slashes, you want to include those as well. And any alpha characters, you want to include that as well. And you want to make sure those are in uppercase. Then for invoice date, you would just key in the invoice date as it is, as what the invoice date on the invoice is. And then you can hit tab over. Then you want to go to the next field is supplier notes. Supplier notes is important. This is where if you have a invoice that you're entering that needs to be wired or that is a direct debit where the money came out beforehand, you would enter it in the supplier notes and the server center will pick that up for you. So example, I would put direct debit and that way we know that we have to go and look for the banking information for that or you would put in like AP wire and that will let us know at the server center that instead of cutting a check, we would actually have to wire this out for you. So direct debit is, is just Oracle speed Meaning that we're not going to generate a payment in AP. We're going to those transactions will will need to be applied to a payment that's already taken place. And one of the things you'll see from us in the next week is, you know, questions around understanding who are the the, the suppliers that you currently wire outside of AP and then apply in AP. In a pre, a lot of that feedback back, um, but we'll go out once again just to make sure we have a complete picture of. Who, who are those suppliers that we currently wire outside of AP? Okay. So the next important thing is to actually attach the invoice copy. You would hit File, Browse, and go to where the invoice is saved. And you would just click it, hit Open, and it will attach it. There we go. And it'll attach it for you. If there's multiple attachments, you can attach those as well as needed. Um, the next part is the requester. This is where it starts in the approval chain, the approval hierarchy. It's important we it's important to try to pick somebody that has a zero approval limit. Um, so I'm going to put in a clerk that I know, an AP clerk that we have here that does not have an approval limit. What this does then, it will go to that person's manager and it follows the approval path based on the amount of the invoice and it goes follows through all the approval until it meets the required approval. Um, for non-PO invoices, you have to input a department number. 
these are usually generated based on the geo codes. The next section is the account company code. So you put in your company code. The AP segment is the same thing as the company code, so those have to be identical. For capital, where 95% of your air capital purchases or your CapEx purchases are all done with POs, you would normally select N for no. Then you have um, the next part, which is expedite. That is if you need something that needs to be cut on the very next check run and it cannot wait based on terms, you can select that. And what that will do is it will pick up, it will change the terms in Oracle to make it an immediate payment. Um, the next box is the print, on, print check at property. This is where if you click that box, it will flag it in Oracle so that when we do the property check run, it will actually pick up that individual uh, invoice to be printed. Um, the next section, if the whole invoice itself contains, you know, is supposed to be taxed and it was not taxed, so you got to accrue the use tax on it. That's where the header use tax is used. What you do is hit the drop down. Uh, most of them are done by properties. So you would find the property that you need, that you're that you are working on, and you would select it. And it, what this does, it will flag it um, so that you can run reports, which that will we will create later on. Um, views that you can see what invoices need to be taxed or need a use tax accrued on at the property level. Then we have the line entries. For the type, when it's non-POs, we always want to make it amount. Um, you would put in a description for for um, what is being what the invoice is. Um, if there's more than one GL account, you would have to hit the plus sign down here to add a line. And you would change again change that to amount and put in the additional description. Um, for price, you would want to put in the price for how much was charged to this one to the for the GL account for cleaning. So it'll be four hundred dollars. For mops, we're gonna say it was thirty dollars. Um, the next important part is the is the billing. This is where the GL code is populated. So I have it being charged to this GL code, um, which I know it when they're charged to cash clearing, but I'm going to put it there <laughs> for demonstration purposes. Um, so the cleaning supplies are going to be charged here, the $400. And then for this department, and then for the next invoice that I have, or the next part of the invoice, which is the mop, I'm going to charge it actually to a whole different company. Maybe. Yep. Whole different company and to a whole different department as well. So this is the billing code is where you would have to, if it's being charged, if it's an invoice that's split between two different properties, you would put those, you put the different um, property numbers, different apartment numbers, everything is all located on the billing. You would have each line for each different GL account you need. And then down below, you, this is where you would put your shipping, any handling, any miscellaneous information you have, and if there's self tax added onto the invoice. So you would just type this in here the same way, um, and then if there was tax, you would put the tax in here, but I'm recurring use tax, so I'm not going to put tax on here. So the next important thing to do after you finish everything, you want to hit calculate, and your total down here, this total should match what your invoice is for. 
That's why it's important to calculate because if you key something in correctly and you submit it without calculating it, it will still go out for approvals and it could be for the wrong amount. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit on this invoice. And then up here at the top, it will tell me that this invoice number that I created has been sent for approval. And that invoice is right here. If you'd like to see who is out for approvals, then you can just click on the invoice itself. And if you go down to the bottom of the screen, it will show you that this particular invoice is out for Yolanda Mercer's approval, who is the manager. Because this invoice, because and it tell you here as well that because uh, Yolanda actually has the approval limit of a thousand dollars. If it was more than a thousand, if it was the invoice was more than a thousand dollars, it would go to Yolanda, and then it would go on to the next person, which in this case it would be Jerry. If it was over a thousand dollars, you know, keep going until it meets its limit with the approval. Then once the person finally approves it, then it, it would become approved status and it would go over into Oracle. Now for um, for PO invoices, you want to go to... Can I make one, one comment on, you know, Matthew mentioned use tax. Use tax is still a work in progress in Coupa. So the way it stands right now, you know, Coupa has the functionality that when you're processing an invoice, you can flag it to say, hey, this we need to accrue use tax on this invoice. Um, on day one, we'll, we'll give you a report at the end of the month that basically says, here are the invoices that you paid in this particular period. Um, here are the GL codes that were charged, and you've indicated that this should have a use tax, and you could use that data to prepare your use tax accruals. Um, longer, longer term, um, that code will create an entry and feed into Oracle automatically, but that will not be available on day one. Hey, Jerry, this is Susan Riverside. So when we get the report, will it be broken out by product and shipping and that kind of thing? We are still building the report, so we actually like your guys' feedback, so thank you for that. I'll make sure to yeah. have that information for you. Yeah, when you say product, I mean, you, you saw where, like where Matthew... Mom. Yeah, we don't accrue sales tax on freight or shipping in Missouri, so I would just need the MOPs and the just the product amount, not the whole invoice. Yeah. The description, yes. I'll yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. But, okay. But again, Thanks, guys. It, no, and that's a great question. But again, it comes back to like when, when Matt you've got some control over how much detail on a non PO invoice. So when you're entering the non PO invoice, you add those descriptions that will help you when you get the report determine what portion should be accrued. Correct. Okay. Yep. So all the detail will come over? Yeah. Yes. If, if you put it in, we can report on Perfect. it. Perfect. That's what I need. Yep. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Good question. So the next part is, um, the next part I'm going to show you is how to enter a, a PO invoice. To do that, it was still under invoices. You go to uninvoiced orders. And then you would enter a PO number. And then you hit search. I'll just clear that and pick one, this one. Okay. Um, and so what it will, then it'll list all the PO, it lists all the lines for that one particular PO. If there was multiple PO lines, like this one down here has one and two, three, four lines on it. So it would list those for you. So what you would do is you would click on the PO number. It will bring you right to the PO. And if you go down to the bottom of the PO, you would click invoice. What this does, it takes everything from the PO side, turns it, takes all the information, and brings it over to the invoice. Which POs are very friendly for AP because it's a lot less information for us to key in. Um, 
you would still do the same thing. You would enter your invoice number, the invoice date, You attach the invoice. The, the chart of accounts should be selected for you because it's all based on the PO because it has to do it on the PO level. You would select your remit address. Um, requesters automatically is going to be filled in for you. Department number is not needed, so I wouldn't, don't put that in there for PO invoices. You have your account company code and segments already filled in for you. It'll also flag it if it's cap capital or not. Um, you would still have to flag it if it's an expedite or a print on property. You would still flag those. Then on the lines, or you also, you know, if the whole invoice is taxed, you would select that. Then on the line level is where you would actually, this is all the descriptions already there for you, which makes it helpful. If it's quantity, you would enter how much was uh, was billed for. So if I got 50 out of those 4,000, um, and then you would change your price as needed. If they were a dollar instead, you would change that. Um, and to answer your question on the like, use tax, if there's only certain lines that need to be charged use tax, you would you would select, you wouldn't select it at the header level. You would add it at the line level. So you would come down to the use tax code on the line level, and the same codes are still there. And you would pick the one that you need, and you would select that instead of the header level. And Matthew, is the uh, use tax codes um, for the specific properties filtered out, or is all use tax codes in there for everybody? It's in there for everybody. It's all different okay. use tax for their properties. So any everybody can use it. So it's also pay attention. It's important to pay attention to what it says in the parentheses so you know exactly what you're looking for. But all properties should be on here. I think that's worth asking the question. We it's, could isolate that. I there's another way to isolate it. It's uh, a be, it's yeah. a it's a lookup table, so it's all gotcha. Okay. Yep. So you would pick the one that you would need. Um, and it should list the properties for you. It has the property names in the parentheses. Most of them are actually very good for the use tax. They actually tend to start with the property information. That makes it easy to identify. Um, if you're only getting billed for one item on the invoice, on the PO, then you would just hit the little red X to delete the lines off of those, the ones you're not being billed for. And then again, you can continue on and entering what you need. What you're being billed for, and you can change the prices as well. You don't have to worry about GL, account, GL accounts because those should come over directly from the PO correctly. And in AP, we do not change the GL codes if they're on POs. Then you would come down to the bottom and you would still enter the same information, shipping, handling, miscellaneous, and tax. You would hit calculate and it will calculate it for you. The total, make sure it matches, and then you hit submit. If the total does not match, you would have to go up and find out where it didn't match at. Then it will come up with a green box that tells you what invoice it is and it's penny receipt. And you can go in and see it. It's penny receipt. And they'll tell you why it's penny receipt. It says the receipt missing for 50 and it needs to receive 50 because there's not received in. Same with this one, there's no received in. And once it gets received in, then it will actually um, go out either it's a, because this is a price variance. It will go out to pending approval to the buyers, and once they approve it, it will go become fully approved and it will go directly into Oracle. And one note I'd like to mention is on pending receipts. If you enter an invoice and there's no receipt for it, 
it will actually email the requester and send them a notification letting them know that they have an invoice out there that's pending receipt on this particular PO. Um, so unlike Stratton Warren, or Stratton Warren, we had to wait for receiving to get completed before we can process the invoice. We are able to process the invoice prior to receiving. So no more holding on to invoice copies until receivers come in. We just put them directly right into Coupa. Any questions so far? Next thing I'm going to cover is credit notes. Um, to enter a non-PO credit note, you would have to hit the drop down, hit credit note. For reason, you want to hit other and continue. Um, you would fill in the same information as you would for a non-PO. The only difference is, is under original invoice number, you would want to put in the invoice number that, you, that the credit applies to. Most of the time they are indicated on the invoice itself from the supplier. Um, if the invoice covers a period of time and not one specific invoice, if you get a rebate of some kind, you can put in a time frame of what it covers. The original invoice number, original invoice date, does not go into Oracle for any for any reason. They're just there just to reference. So when AP goes and looks at them, or when any of us, anybody can go look at it and see why are this, why we took this credit. The other big difference is, is when you key in the the actual amount for non POs you want to make sure it is a negative amount instead of a positive amount. Do you guys um, know if credit memos that are entered into Great Plains right now that don't have uh, uh, invoices to apply them to, will we get uh, pulled over to Coupa? Yes, anything that is open in Oracle will be, well, actually won't go into Coupa, though anything that's open in, in Great Plains will go into Oracle. So if anything, any any um, credits that you have outstanding still that haven't been applied to invoices will come over into Oracle. Um, the other thing is if they, if also the whole negative thing applies down to the total, the taxes as well, if you have taxes and shipping, if you're being charged to ship a product back, do so you want to put it as a, a positive number instead of a negative number? And that way it'll take off, it'll calculate it for you. Um, if they're giving you credit back for taxes as well, you want to make sure you put that as a negative amount. So you calculate and uh, this one, it's, it'll, then it'll give you the total and that should match your total of your invoice, of your credit memo. Now I'm going to show you how to process a credit note against a PO. Um, so you would go under orders. You would again type in your PO number, locate your PO, and over on the uh, on the side over here under actions, you want to hit the red box to create a P create a credit note against that PO. You would enter the same information. Again, some of the information is already there for you, which is good. Um, you would need your original PO number. You want to attach your invoice. The difference um, for lines is you want to change it from a different type. It says quantity. You actually want to change it to other. So that way, if there's adjustments need to be made for quantity and price, you're able to do it all at the same time. So you just enter in what quantity you're getting credit for, adjust the price if needed, um, and do it for all the lines as needed. 
remove the ones you don't need, and then you hit calculate, and they'll give you the new price, and you just submit. One thing, if this information is missing, because I didn't put any information on this one, I'm going to hit submit. It's actually going to come up with a little red box, and it tells me to fix the errors. Everything will be highlighted in red what needs to be fixed, what's required. And once that's fixed, then I can have it submit, and it'll actually be corrected for me. It'll go through for me. Any questions? Can you do um, negative accrual on that as well, tax? If you accrued the tax yes, on the original? Did. I didn't yep. see it. You, it was probably there. I just didn't see it. Yeah, it's it's there. Um, like if I pull up the one, I believe it's or how I'll create a new one. If you, it's all the information is all still there for you. Um, so it's it's very identical to an invoice. So you can do a header accrual tax on here as well, which is here, okay. and you can also okay. do your line. Yep. Perfect. Thank it's you. It's all there for I just you. Didn't I, I just didn't see it or I just didn't think to look at the time. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Good question though. Okay. Um there are the for for AP there it's very useful to view reviews and to look at the different views in here. Um there's a couple already created that I'm gonna show you guys. Um, so if you go under views and if you go down to if you go down to there's some that say there's one that says pending approval. What this does is show you all the invoices that are out pending approval. Um, you should only be able to see your properties without their pending approval. Um, at that point, you're if you want to send this file to anybody, you're able to go to export, up here, export at the top, and you can hit Excel. It will either generate an Excel file for you that you just click and go, and you can open it up, or it would actually be emailed to you depending on the size of the view. If the view is more than 200, it's most likely will be emailed to you. I, th I think one thing you really like about Coupa is it's very user-friendly and the reporting is, is really good. You know, once you start to practice, um, and you can use those filters to pretty much pull any information you need out of out of Coupa. Yep. Like for this one, I, want, I have pending approval. I want to see anything that is out pending approval for a certain person. I can go down, find. Remember um, with a column, current approver. And I could put in, I could put contains. I don't need to put the per, know the person's full name. I could put in like Yolanda. I can hit search. It show me everything that's out for Yolanda. And there's the one that I created, the very first one. But she has all these out there, these very few lists out there pending her approval. Can you speak? To, um, the way the approval process will be at a property level, for instance, if um, Carla puts it in and she's the AP person, who approves it? Does it come to who does the approving? The way that the approval process works is a management hierarchy. It's based on who the requester is. So, and that's why it's important when I cut when I went over this when you create the invoice. Like I'm gonna hear a crazy invoice. I'm gonna put in whoever to request it. I could put anybody in here. That's okay. In, okay. That's inside. Uh, that's inside Coupa. So okay. that's why it's always good to start with. Um, probably, you know, if it's if it's a food and beverage, it's always good to start with somebody inside food and beverage, or even just a regular chef, and then it will go on to whoever needs to approve. So at a property level, we might want to get that matrix kind of 
or at least start thinking about that matrix? Oh, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, the sourcing group, if they're not already, already are going to work with you on the matrix on how to, how to set it up. Yep. And okay. it'll it'll follow it'll follow a standard approval approval matrix. You know, across like all the properties. Like if they were putting, like they oh okay like they were putting in the the PO that kind of thing. Similar, very yep. similar to the PO. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Um, and the other view that I like to show that's really good is just a regular standard pending receipt report. What this view will show, it shows anything that's out there that's pending receipt. Now, you're able, like I said, you're able to go to advance and you can put in filters in here. Um, you, you shouldn't have to do account company code because you should just be limited to just your property. Um, but you're also able to do other filters. You can add up to four at one time. So you can do different things. You can do suppliers. You can do just... You can play around and see what works for you, and that that would be great. That you know, then it'd be great for you to use. That's why Coupa is very friendly on reporting wise. Is that something that AP owns? Checking on those um, open receivers. We will we will provide support, like oftentimes the buyer will add a comment to pending receipt that requires AP action. Our goal will be to, to, to do that for you, um, as okay. well as we'll send out we'll send out regular reports each month on in, invoices that are pending receipts or pending approval. However, it's okay. good, you know, it's good at the property to have that, re, you know, capability, and you may have some unique things that, hey, you don't want to wait for the monthly report, and you may sure, be pushing sure. your business owners to get things through the system. So it'll be, okay. we're going to team, we're going to team up on that one. Okay. All right. Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys as well is you don't have to go to Oracle for your payment information. Everything will flow over into, into Coupa. I want to show you where that information is located. Um, it's all the way at the bottom. If you go down and you'll see payments, if you hit the little arrow on the side, if the invoice was paid, it'll actually say paid and it'll actually give you the, the payment number under the description and the amount that was paid and the date it was paid. So all this information will flow over from Oracle. And then you can also filter on that as well. So you, when you do filter, you can actually filter based on paid or an unpaid. So you can go paid, and you can put yes or no. You can also do payment number as well. So you can put in your payment number. So you can do invoices are paid with that payment. Um, one other thing, when you first start using, when you first start getting access to Coupa, you might start getting um, a lot of notifications. There is a way to turn those off. Um, so if you go under at the very top, you'll have your name. If you hit settings, um, and you go to notifications, this will actually show you everything that is checkmark is everything that you're gonna you could get a notification for. So if someone, if I enter an invoice and someone bypass my approval, then I will get a notification for that. There's all different kinds of notifications, a bunch for invoices, um, just, just sourcing stuff. There's a bunch of different kinds. So I recommend at first to play around and see what what notifications you actually would like to receive, and you can go in and check those off as needed. And the last thing I want to show you guys is under, if, if you have an invoice, or you have a supplier, but they actually, um, they invoice under a different name than what they're actually called. Um, and so it's a DBA, so you go under suppliers. And um, you wanna find out what the supplier name actually is. You can hit advance. 
and you can filter by an alternate name which will give DBA and you can type in the name here and it will tell you if that supplier is doing business under a different name. Because I have the alternate name and then you'll actually have the real name of the supplier. I don't know when I'll talk my head otherwise I would share it with you guys. So, <laughs> But it'll actually give you the true name that is actually registered under. Any questions? So like I said, our, our plan is to follow up with um, specific documentation, screenshots, step-by-step, -step, same thing that Matthew just went through. Um, you know, the plan also is to get, get you some access to Coupa tests for the next three weeks so you can, you can play around with Coupa. And then when we go live, we'll be on the phone on a team site to, to basically, you know, be able to, you know, support you in any questions that you have as you begin to process invoices live. So I'm going to turn it back to Jerry. There's no more questions. So, I, you know, I mentioned Symbio. You know, Symbio is a third party that supports us today on PO processing. And so this is a service we want to provide to the properties. Where if you have you know you have some suppliers that haven't engaged with us to submit invoice electronically and they're a large volume, you can you can stack those invoices up that have the invoices that are POs that have PO numbers on the invoice, and you can you can scan them for this email box once or twice a week, whatever frequency, and within 48 hours those invoices will be in Coupa. Um, we'll send out a cheat sheet when we get closer to go live to give you the to give you the details, but um, it really is as simple as that. Every time you send an email to Symbio, they'll send back a confirmation, and you know just to make sure that they got the file. And really, the, the biggest issue I've seen since we've been dealing with Symbio is just the size of the file. If you go over 14 megs, it, it, it'll, it'll, it's over their threshold, and so you just have to keep the files under 14 megs. So if you ever got an error message, you just have to break up the file and resubmit it. Uh, but like I said, more more details when we get closer to go live on Symbio. You know, e-invoicing is a really big initiative with, with us in Coupa. I mean, Coupa, for the, for the first time, gives suppliers the ability to interact with us in our purchasing system electronically. We send them a PO electronically. They can submit the invoice back to us electronically in a number of different fashions. They can do it at EDI. They can do it at CXML. Or smaller suppliers can even take that PO and flip it to an invoice. Um, you know, so at Go Live, you know, sourcing has been working with a number of suppliers to get their commitment to go e-invoicing on day one. And I'll, I'll share with you the list of suppliers, and then when we get closer to Go Live, we'll update that for you. But if these suppliers are submitting invoice electronically, you don't have to submit the invoices via paper. So it'll be a, it'll be a significant um, efficiency for accounts payable in terms of processing processing invoices. Matter of fact, we. We insist with suppliers that once they've demonstrated that they're using the portal, we don't process paper invoices. We really want to force them into the portal because at the end of the day, it's a win-win. You know, it's it's more efficient for us and it's also more efficient for a supplier because once they put that invoice into the portal, it can never be lost. Uh, and you know how much time we spend today on paper invoices, you know, chasing it, skipped invoices, follow-up, copies. And so th this is our vehicle to really you know, persuade suppliers to use the portal. The next two pages are just a list of suppliers that are already in the works and committed to e-invoicing. And like I said, we'll update this as we approach Go Live. But I wanted to give you a flavor for you know those suppliers and um, some of them, like the U.S. Foods of the world, they're, they're the big volume invoices that you will not have to worry about processing invoice in Coupa. You know, we talked about central releasing of payments. So we'll we'll feed those approved invoices from Coupa to Oracle. We'll generate payments to suppliers on a scheduled basis. Any ACH data that's in Great Plains it will be converted to Oracle. So we'll continue to send electronic payments to the suppliers you send today. You know, Matthew showed you how if you have a local invoice you're putting it to Coupa, we can print that check on property for you, and you you can see how you can indicate that in Coupa, and it'll come to you. Um, and again, wire payments, you know, initially, 
everything related to wire payments will be what we call direct debits that Matthew indicated. We'll be applying those wire payments. But once we see the, see the history, we'll work with you on opportunities because Oracle gives us the capability to generate a wire directly to the bank. And so, you know, we'll look for opportunities to convert wires that today may be a two-step process, you know, wire it outside of, outside of AP and then apply it in AP to just submitting an invoice that's for a vendor that will wire every day. Um, new suppliers, maintenance on suppliers, you know, your buyers are being trained on the SIM module, which is connected to Coupa that they can use SIM to create new suppliers, get suppliers to fill out the proper documentation and registration. And then once those once through SIM that supplier is approved, it'll be it'll be input into Oracle. And then any changes to suppliers come to a PNK vendor registration mailbox, which is by the way, we're in the process of changing that from PNK to PNG. <laughs> um, but any any changes will also come to the um, vendor registration mailbox, and we'll handle that centrally. And then just a couple of other back-end processes. Um, I think we've mentioned, you know, the approved invoices in Coupa will be ex exported. The month-end process will be will be done centrally in Oracle. And then we, we have a central help desk that we're here to support you. You know, if you get lengthy supplier statements that needs to be gone through or suppliers that may cross over multiple properties, you have access to our central help desk. Matter of fact, you can encourage your suppliers to not even, you know, not even bother you with questions. They can come to our help desk and they'll get a response um, to their inquiries. And then lastly, just some things that are to be finalized. You know, I talked about Stratton Warren. Stratton Warren is being retired. You know, come 1231, you won't have that hook between Stratton Warren and Great Plains. So we're gonna pull all the approved invoices you know, until you're fully up and running in Coupa, and and you know that the Coupa the Coupa integra, uh, Coupa Go Live schedule crosses over the entire month of January. So in the interim, we're going to be pulling those approved invoices from Stratton Warren into Oracle. And even beyond that, if you're on Stratton Warren for retail, or if you're if you're going to use Yellow Dog for for retail, um, we'll we'll continue to pull those approved invoices into Oracle. And then, the, and then the last thing, you, and I think I may have mentioned it, you, you'll, you'll get a you'll, you'll get an inquiry from us in the next week that we just want to learn more about who those suppliers are that are current wires, and also anything that you do that are one-offs. You know, in a survey we did a couple months ago, we got a lot of feedback, um, but we're going we're going back through that, and for those we haven't heard from, we'll go back out um, just to make sure we know all the one-off situations, so that as we transition, we don't want anything to get lost lost in the shuffle. And I think that's that's it for that's pretty much it. Any um, questions, comments? Does it seem like it's pretty user friendly? So again, um, once you once you get your test logons, we're available for any questions between now and go live. And like I said, on on go live, we'll have formally scheduled Teams meeting invites to be on the line when you begin the process, okay? Okay. Other than Thanks, that, sorry. anything else? I would really appreciate everybody um, jumping on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.